This video is supported by Link Micro. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you my new equipment, which is a digital microscope from Link Micro. The microscope comes with a handbook as well as a quick uh, assembly manual, so it is easy to set up the microscope uh, quickly and easily. The microscope came in a cardboard box, but it is padded with foam, so it kept everything uh, safe. And as you can see, uh, we can start to see the accessories. The first one is an HDMI cable for an external display. And then the next accessory is a USB cable for powering uh, everything and also for uh, controlling the LED lights. And then this display is uh, the main unit. It is the display and at the back it is the microscope with the lens and of course inside them there is a sensor. And then further inspecting the accessories we can see a power supply for powering the wall system. And then we have a bug box for storing bugs for further observation. And then we have a package of slides for checking uh, the microscope, looking at different samples. We have a SD card with 32 gigabytes of capacity. It's uh, perfectly enough for storing the pictures and the videos. We have some spare parts, some set screws and knobs. Then we have another USB cable for data transfer. We also have a remote controller, which can be used to control the microscope and adjust the settings. And then we have this slide box with a built-in light source. This can be used to inspect transparent cross sections. And the package contains five samples that we can inspect. And then these are the additional lenses. So they can be attached uh, to the main unit and then we can achieve different uh, working distances and magnifications. And then the next part is this metal bracket. This is the holder for the microscope, so we can insert it into this. And then this rod is the Z rod or the stand, so the bracket is attached to this. And then the whole thing is uh, standing on this base plate. And the base plate is not only a working surface, but as you can see, it also has two LED light sources with flexible arms, so we can direct the lights wherever we need it. So we can start the assembling process by preparing the base plate. I just fold away the arms so they will not disturb me and then we can start to screw in the threaded end of the Z rod into the base plate so now we have the stand done and then in the next uh, step we can attach the bracket uh, to this Z rod or stand and I attached it uh, sideways and uh, the reason why I did it is because it's uh, easier to work with it uh, in this uh, direction and now we can uh, start preparing the microscope, but before inserting it into the bracket, we have to pay attention to these two screws. We have to remove them so they will not hit the bracket. And then we have to pay attention to this notch, which has to be aligned with the same uh, groove uh, on the bracket. So then we can align it and uh, adjust it uh, perfectly. Once uh, the microscope is inside the bracket, we can tighten the set screws and then finally we can put the lens uh, back. So the same two screws go in in the sides and then we are done with installing the microscope. And then if you look at the bracket, it has two degrees of freedom. One is this knob, which I'm turning now, and this is the coarse Z adjustment or coarse focusing. And then this other uh, set screw releases another rod, which allows me to adjust the microscope along the y-axis so I can move the microscope towards myself or I can move it away from myself. As you can see the display can be tilted back and forth so we can sit in front of it and look at the display or stand above the microscope and we can still look at the work. Then in the next step I'm going to assemble these spring-loaded clips. They are attached to the base plate 
so they can be used to hold down flat objects against the base plate, so it's easier to observe them. So this is how the spring-loaded clips look like. So I can lift them individually or both of them at the same time. And if I take this PCB, you can see that I can easily slide it in or with the same effort I can remove it. Now if you look at the back panel, we can see an HDMI port, a USB port and also an SD card slot. So these are our connectivity options. Then we also have this four-way cable for the microscope, which has different connectors. So the first one I took is the micro USB. This is used to power the display unit or the microscope. So that goes in the back of the panel. And then we have this miniature DC barrel jack, which goes at the bottom of the base plate. As you can see, there is a connector there and uh, this cable powers the two LED light sources. So this cable, which I mentioned earlier, goes into the back of the display. And then finally, the USB-A cable goes into the phone charger looking power supply and then that supplies the whole thing. And now, as you can see, uh, the power is on, the LEDs are lit, so then we can start the observation. So the next accessory is this remote controller. It comes without batteries, so we have to put in two AAA batteries, and then we can start uh, using it. As you can see, the remote controller can be used to navigate around uh, on the display. We can discover all the menu options and everything. As you can see, there are many things that we can uh, change. I will not uh, go into very details, but if you want to know any details, feel free to ask me in the comments. But uh, as you could see, as I navigated through the menu, we can adjust basically anything related to the display. So date and time, language, we can format the SD card, we can change the resolution of the video, uh, we can change the options for the image and uh, so on and so on. So now uh, let's uh, look at this image and I will press the take picture button and uh, this is the result of uh, taking a picture. It's an unmodified image and uh, now as you can see it on the display at the top left corner I'm recording a video so I'm going to show you the video now. So this is the image of the video so it's not moving at all, but uh, this is how the video looks like. But instead of looking at the still image, uh, let's uh, move around. So we are looking at the same PCB, but uh, through the lens A. And you can see that the magnification is uh, noticeably higher. But uh, yeah, I'm just moving around the PCB and uh, checking different details so I can see what the lens and the microscope sees but we can change to lens D, which is an even higher magnification. So you can see that uh, the traces and uh, the components almost fill the wall display. And these are small traces and small components, so the magnification is uh, really high. And uh, if I just uh, try to focus on one single component, which is just an LED, you can also see that it uh, fills uh, basically the wall display. So the magnification, again, it's uh, really high. If I remember correctly, these are 1608 metric components. So their width is 0.8 millimeter and their length is 1.6 millimeter. So they are uh, quite tiny. And now as I'm navigating towards another component, you can see that the brightness dropped. The reason for this is because this component is higher and the light cannot reach it uh, perfectly. And I believe that this could be improved if the light source would be located at the end of the lens instead of uh, on those arms that we have. 
So coming back to these uh, lenses, since I showed you three different uh, images through three different lenses, let me show you how to change them. As you can see, uh, the lenses have uh, bolts on both sides, left and right side. And if I remove them, then I can just uh, simply pull out the lens. And then I can just take uh, whatever other lens I want to use and then align it and insert and uh, screw the two bolts uh, back to their places again. And then uh, once this is done, the microscope is uh, ready to be used. Then we can look at another accessory. First we need this DC barrel jack and then we have this slide box which also have a DC plug so let's plug uh, the plug in it and uh, now as you can see we have the LED on in this box so let's look at this box which contains five different samples which can be used in this kind of uh, setup so the first one is a pine stem so let's put this slide over this uh, box so it will be lit up by the LED in the slide box and then by using the lens D we can look at this cross section and uh, this is the cross section as you can see I don't know the exact magnification but uh, it's rather high and you can see that uh, the image is uh, relatively sharp and uh, the colors are quite nice and vivid I haven't done any post-processing, so this is the as-received image. And if I change to something else, then I can also observe uh, this thing. I try to move it around and uh, focus on it a little better. So maybe we can achieve a bit uh, better image quality. Then we have this other sample, which is uh, some part of an insect and this is uh, supposed to be uh, the leg of it, if I'm uh, not wrong. So you can see that this is a very nice uh, cross section. It almost looks like as an X-ray image, but of course this is just an optical image. And uh, the surprising fact is that uh, all the details are, are very nice in this uh, image, so all the small hairs and all the small uh, details and wrinkles and everything uh, is visible. So I think that this uh, microscope can resolve uh, very nice uh, images. And then we have uh, two more specimens. This is a wing of an insect, again, some insect part. So I try to focus it better, so even the small hairs can be uh, sharp on the surface of the wing. And if I move around, you can see that a uh, lot of lot of details are revealed very nicely. But of course, uh, this could be further improved if I focus a bit more better and so on. But you can see that even with a quick uh, look through, we can even see these small hairs and everything. And then the last uh, specimen is probably the scariest uh, specimen. Uh, this is also some insect uh, related thing. And again, we can see all the small hairs and wrinkles and uh, details and everything. So I think that this set of slides was a good idea to include because it nicely demonstrates the capabilities of the microscope. And speaking of capabilities, we can look at uh, some even smaller objects. But before that, let me do some very rough calibration with this 0.01 millimeter per division scale. So as an example, here is a transistor, which is quite small, but I have an even smaller transistor. So you can see how small it is as compared to the scale. And just to make the things more fun, this is the inside of a microchip. And just to further continue showcasing the capabilities of this microscope, here is a few examples of different objects. And uh, some of them hopefully you can recognize, or if you cannot, then I recommend you to go to my website because I wrote a long article about this microscope with all of its uh, pros and cons so you can see if uh, this microscope will be good for you or not. But I'm uh, so far very satisfied with the microscope 
there are only just a few minor issues that are bothering me, but uh, they are not the end of the world. So I want to thank Link Micro again for sponsoring this video and for providing this microscope for me. And uh, if you want to get this microscope, please follow the links in the description or the links on my website. So I hope this video was useful to you. I hope you learned something. I hope you could get some more information about this microscope as well. And see you in the next video.